Good morning, my name is Robert, uh, one of the pastors here at Calvary. Grateful to have you tuning in to your word for the day today. And uh, I got a question for you. What were you afraid of as a kid? Uh, there's so many different uh, common childhood fears, maybe a uh, fear of being alone, maybe a fear of the dark, maybe you're afraid of what was under your bed or afraid of what was in the closet. And what's interesting is uh, as you get older, these fears subside because of knowledge about them. You, you learn to understand that, that there aren't powerful things in your closet or under your bed. You understand that the darkness really isn't scary most of the time. Uh, you understand that, that some of the things you're afraid of as a kid aren't things to be feared because of knowledge about them. But conversely, you develop a whole new set of fears that is based on the knowledge that you do actually have. You begin to be afraid of things that actually can harm you, situations that, that can put you in danger, situations that maybe have hurt you in the past, and, and that, or maybe just a healthy fear of, of dangerous uh, heavy machinery and, and tools that can harm you and, and cause uh, hurt to your body. And what's interesting is that throughout the Bible, we see frequently uh, the phrase that we're to fear the Lord. And I think this is a, a very misunderstood and maybe often ignored uh, phrase and portion of scripture. And uh, unfortunately, I have to acknowledge that in a, a few minutes here for your word for the day, I can't fully do this topic justice, but I wanna talk about this a little bit. Because in today's Psalm, we, in Psalm 76, we hear this phrase, or, or rather this stanza in Psalm 76, verses seven through nine, it says, but you, Lord, are to be feared. Who can stand before you once your anger is roused? From the heavens you uttered judgment, the earth feared and was still. When God arose to establish justice, to, to save all the humble of the earth. And this is, this is maybe a, a little odd for some of you because you think, well, God is loving, God is kind and gracious towards us, but then we're told to be afraid when his anger is roused. What, how do we reconcile those two things? And I think the way we do that is by understanding that this, this fear is a little different. We're not afraid because he has hurt us. We're not afraid because we are in bodily danger, but, but we stand in reverence and fear to the power and greatness that is the Lord. So this maybe isn't a fear out of trembling, but a fear out of respect and bowing down. Because when you look at the Lord, you see that, that he is holy. He is perfect and just and we are not. We see that he has been at work throughout history. He has been helping us and guiding us. But we all want the very thing that causes that, that healthy fear. We want a God who can overcome injustices in this world. We want a God who can overcome the power of evil that seems to be ever growing in our world. We want a God who can save us from the depravity that we so readily see around us. And so the, these desires we have for overcoming evil and injustice and depravity are the very thing that point us to God, but also the things that point to the fact that if we want a God who can overcome sin and depravity and injustice, we need a God who is powerful. We need a God who can execute proper justice and judgment towards evil and injustice. We need a God who can uh, reconcile sin once and for all by waging a war that's much bigger than either one of us uh, can wage. We need a God who is powerful and that power should cause us to have a healthy respect and fear of him because we don't want to be on the receiving end of that healthy justice and judgment of evil and justice and depravity. We want to be those who he's coming to save, the humble of the earth as it says, of those who, of us who profess Jesus as our savior, bow down and worship him and get the glory that comes from forgiveness of sin and uh, reconciling our relationship to him and being in perfect unity again. So I hope that in this brief, uh, very short uh, look at the fear of the Lord, this helps you maybe understand that the fear of the Lord can be a wonderful thing because it points to just how desperately we want the very thing he can provide not just in our life, but in the world around us. But if he was a small and uh, impowerful God, then he wouldn't be able to accomplish the purposes that we all have a desperate longing for him to carry out in our world. So I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you maybe have a new outlook of what it means to fear and respect the Lord and that you can worship him for his power and goodness while also learning to have a healthy fear of him. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.